So the Liberals actually released an ad campaign not too long ago, and apparently it was a digital campaign. It wasn't only digital, it was on the radio and on TV and in the newspapers. So but the Conservatives are responding to that ad campaign by releasing their own counter ad campaign where, where they're basically, you know, showing the facts and debunking uh, the Liberals, which all they do is say, we are investing a hundred million over 10 years in children and we will feed the kids. Then you go look at that bill that they just enacted that will invest so much money and the bill starts in 2038. That's what the Liberals do. They make promises a bunch of times on the news and then after a while they'll change the minister to another minister and then that new minister will make the same announcement that the other guy made a couple years before so that you don't realize that they're making the same announcement. So I actually included Justin Trudeau's uh, hidden policies that he's going to try and, and pass if he stay, if, if Justin Trudeau gets elected again, he's going to try and pass these policies that a lot of people don't even know about. Now, I don't know if you noticed that Justin Trudeau was using the we're not going back, you know, uh, slogan from Kamala Harris. Like, don't start using the same policies as Kamala Harris. And if I was you, Justin, I would actually make sure that there's no one for the next year doing protests saying free Palestine. When it comes to strengthening our public health care system, the Liberal team is fighting for you. They made investments to hire more family doctors and reduce wait lists. The Liberal team is fighting for you to build more homes and protect renters, to keep guns out of our communities, to make life more affordable, and to create new, well-paying jobs and build a thriving economy that works for everyone. Liberals want to ban free speech. They want to lock up people for life in prison for online posts, give fines of up to $10 million to websites who fail to regulate hate speech, lock up parents who punish their kids using reasonable force, 20% inheritance of your property after you die as a tax. Make life more affordable. No, that the economy is the issue that most concerns Canadians. Right. And that is why I am so glad to share some great news. Not only are more people than ever struggling with food insecurity, food banks are also having a hard time with keeping up with demand. This is the highest level of food bank use that we've seen in Canadian history. The demand this year has just been um, incredibly overwhelming. There are people who are uh, working, uh, fully employed, and having to access the food bank. As a single mother of uh, four kids, it's not easy for me. I live in a frozen house because I can barely pay for the gas. Canada's on a roll, Mr. Speaker. Our plan is working. When it comes to strengthening our public health care system, the Liberal team is fighting for you. They made investments to hire more family doctors and reduce wait lists. The thousands of cancer patients from BC will be sent south of the border for radiation treatment. Both urban and rural emergency units are facing great strain offering urgent care because of staffing shortages and a flood of patients. CTV News has obtained this video from inside a hospital in Ontario that has turned one of its bathrooms into a patient room. Hundreds of people with a cancer diagnosis are waiting longer than a month. Fort St. John's Hospital shut down overnight for the fifth day in a row, while Fort Nelson doesn't know when their ER will shut down on short notice. Over just 24 hours, two patients at this ER on Montreal's South Shore died waiting to see a doctor. One, Radio Canada reports, had been waiting 12 hours. Siobhan Mitchell talked to CTV from inside a Toronto hospital, posting this photo on social media. She says she waited 48 hours in this hallway to get a bed for emergency surgeries and said she witnessed a flood of sick patients jamming the ER. Until you are in it, you don't really understand how desperate and critical it is. It's terrifying, it really is. To keep guns out of our communities. They banned hunters and sport shooters who have li were licensed, law-abiding, trained, and tested, that all of a sudden we wouldn't have gun crime? Shooting after shooting. It's a record that no city wants to break. Despite the federal government's attempts to crack down on guns, it seems gangsters in Metro Vancouver have no problem getting their hands on them. 
A person decked out in a hoodie and a mask opens fire on a Markham home, letting off several shots before fleeing. We exceeded the highest number of shootings that this city has ever experienced. Hamilton police say they keep seeing the same people coming back time and time again. Approximately 90% of these firearms that we seize are directly traced back to the U.S. Some shootings this year happened in broad daylight in busy areas. It's a complete disregard for the safety of those around. I want to protect Canadians from criminals while Trudeau and the NDP want to protect turkeys from hunters. A day doesn't go by that we don't have, unfortunately, a firearm offence in, in Toronto. Uh, I go to community meetings all the time. Our citizens are scared. Uh, they're scared to go out in the street. We're seeing violent offences all the time. And the biggest problem, again, is it's repeat offenders. We continually arrest these people. They're back out on the streets in a matter of days at times. Uh, committing fences again. The Liberal team is fighting for you to build more homes and protect renters. He was really concerned about rents. He would line behind us uh, and support the lowering, the removal of the GST on new apartment constructions. We're going to continue to be there to do the hard work of delivering for Canadians while he relies on catchy slogans. We were the ones that proposed taking the tax off home building, Mr. Speaker. The one right. idea, that good idea that he finally copied, but he talks about slogans. One is the Housing Accelerator Fund. The $4 billion program that was supposed to speed up housing. We asked the housing minister yesterday in committee how many homes it had completed. The answer is zero. Nada, nothing. His quote, it doesn't actually lead to the construction of specific homes. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it cost $4 billion to build zero homes, how much would it cost? The Housing Accelerator Fund is about investing in municipalities across the country to change the frame around which they build homes faster. This is the approach that we're taking, and it's, and it's working, Mr. Speaker. $4 billion, 35 photo ops, one minister, zero homes. He not only says the program doesn't build homes, he says it doesn't lead to the construction of homes. He couldn't point to one development that had actually been completed. They've been in power for eight years and they can't get anything built. When will they get the bureaucracy out of the, and the taxes out of the way so that we can build the homes? And to create new well-paying jobs and build a thriving economy that works for everyone. This Prime Minister has pushed $100 billion of energy investment out of Canada, most of it into the United States. And once again, I can imagine that the champagne will be popping over at the Trump Tower when they find out how much more Canadian money this Prime Minister wants to send south. Why does he want to kill Canadian jobs? Why don't we bring home production and paychecks for our people? He would not have invested in TMX. He would not have gotten it built. But Mr. Speaker, on this side of the aisle, we will stand up for Alberta. We will stand up for oil and gas workers across the country. Mr. Speaker, when we were in government, we didn't have to offer $30 billion bailouts for pipelines because they made money. That's how business works. He, he wants to create a bailout economy. And let's, let's just let's clarify how this worked. Yeah, let's. $30 billion, $7 billion of which went to a Texas oil company, exactly. which took our tax, tax dollars right. down to Texas to build American pipelines. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, all our exes are in Texas. Why don't we bring home those jobs for Canada?